Hi friends, in this video I am going to discuss Applied Peaks Part 4 that is laser and its applications. Laser and its applications. First of all, laser. Laser. L-A-S-E-R. Laser. Laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation and laser the laser is a device which amplifies light waves laser is a device which amplifies light waves laser was invented by th maiman th maiman and coming to the characteristics of a laser coming to the characteristics of laser Laser radiation is monochromatic. Laser radiation is monochromatic. That means what is uh, monochromatic means uh, it contains only one particular wavelength of light. It contains uh, monochromatic means contains it is the, the radio uh, that means uh, it contains only particular wavelength of light particular wavelength of light and the laser radiation is coherent coherent means same it has uh, the laser has uh, that means the light has same phase and amplitude same phase and amplitude and uh, laser radiation is highly parallel that is highly directional and a narrow beam of light narrow beam of that means beam is very narrow very narrow beam of light coming to the principle of laser laser works on the principle of uh, quantum theory of radiation works on the principle of quantum theory of radiation and coming to the important terms in the laser spontaneous emission spontaneous emission it is the process of photon emission takes place immediately without any inducement during the transition of atoms from higher levels to lower energy levels from the higher le energy levels to lower energy levels spontaneous emission it is the process of uh, photon emission takes place immediately without any inducement during the transition of atoms from higher energy levels to lower energy levels and the number of spontaneous transition takes place units takes place takes place per unit time per unit volume is directly proportional to the number of atoms in the higher level that is nsp number of uh, spontaneous transition nsp is proportional to the next higher level that is n2 that is nsp equal to a into n2 here a is einstein coefficient of spontaneous emission a is einstein coefficient of spontaneous emission okay and the next important one is stimulated emission stimulated emission here the stimulated emission is the process of photon emissions takes place by an inducement given by another photon given by another photon incident on the atoms in higher levels stimulated emission is the process of photon emission takes place by an inducement given by another photon in, uh, given by another photon incident on the atom c in the higher levels is uh, stimulated emission that means it is the process to increase the number of transition of atoms for higher energy levels to lower energy levels that is uh, finally you can conclude that it is a process to increase to increase the it is a process to increase the number of transition of uh, atoms for higher energy level to lower, uh, lower energy levels. That means uh, here the next state energy level the NST is proportional to N2 into Q. Here NST number of uh, transition state uh, proportional to N2 into Q. Q is the number of photons in the incident radiation into into your uh, q is the number of photons in the incident radiation next popular inversion popular 
inversion it is the establishment of situation to make more number of atoms in the excited state required for the chain reaction of stimulated emission required for the chain reaction of stimulated emission here the uh, method of this obtaining popular inversion is uh, very very important it is optical pumping the method of obtaining popular inversion is optical pumping that is uh, if the atoms in the ground states are if the atoms in the ground states are brought to excited state ground state to excited state by the means of light energy by the means of light energy this process is called optical pumping this process is called optical pumping so the method of obtaining popular inversion is optical pumping what is that optical pumping is nothing but if the atoms in the ground state are brought to the excited state by the means of light energy by the means of light energy this process is called optical pumping this process is called optical pumping okay and the next one laser applications uh, types of lasers next one types of lasers there are mainly three types of lasers first one solid type liquid type and gaseous type coming to the sa uh, solid type there are mainly three types of solid layer solid lasers first one is ruby laser ruby laser second one semiconductor laser that is nothing but gallium arsenide diode laser semiconductor lasers third one is hand hand glass lasers third one is hand glass lasers okay first one of uh, first one is uh, under solid laser is ruby laser second one is semiconductor laser third one is hand glass laser and next one liquid lasers the main liquid lasers are nothing but organic liquid lasers the liquid lasers are nothing but organic liquid lasers next uh, gaseous lasers gaseous lasers are mainly three types helium neon gas laser co2 gas laser and photo dissociation laser and photo dissociation lasers okay once again types of lasers there are mainly three types of lasers solid liquid and gaseous and under solid there are ruby and semiconductor and hand glass under liquid organic liquid lasers under gaseous helium neon and co2 and photo dissociation lasers next applications of lasers laser have many applications it is uh, used to find uh, very long distances laser is used to find very long distances and to produce high temperature laser is used to produce high temperature to melt and vaporize the metals to melt and vaporize the metals and used to bore holes in hard surfaces layers are used to bore holes in hard surfaces and in case of treatment of eye in case of treatment of eye laser is used and lasers have wide applications in communications wide applications in communication that means in communications uh, to detect OFC cable break uh, laser is uh, sent to the uh, that uh, optical fiber whenever there is a break it uh, shows a some uh, spike whenever it is a break wherever it is a break it shows a, a spike that means uh, uh, one meter is there nothing but that is OTDR OTDR whenever a fiber is connected to the OTDR OTDR it, it OTDR sends the laser sends the laser uh, wherever the cable break is occur that means whenever the wherever it is cable break occur it shows a spike it shows a spike it shows a spike this spike uh, under that uh, corresponding spike means uh, here the cable is break here the cable is break in this way you can detect uh, uh, the cable breaks wherever it is uh, break okay in this way it is used in communications and it is also used in underwater communication why because laser is not absorbed by the water laser is not absorbed by the water so that's why it is also used in uh, underwater communications underwater communications okay once again applications of the laser 
it is used to find the long distances and it is used to produce high temperature to melt and vaporize the metals and it is used to bore holes in the hand surfaces in the hard surfaces it is used to bore holes uh, in hard surfaces and treatment of eye uh, and also communications and also communications okay friends thank you in the next video i will discuss uh, atomic structure okay atomic structure okay thank you